Hello everyone, beautiful to have you here. My name is Raphael Felmer, and I lived for five years without using money. But today, I'm not here to tell you how I did it. I'm going to tell you why I did it. Do you think that everything is perfect in this world, or would you like to change something? I believe all of us would like to see change. But sometimes we feel lonely with this big challenge, or we don't know where to start. But we all know that if everyone in the world would live like us in Europe, we would need at least three other planets, and there are no backup planets around. Today, I'm here to tell you how you can live the change you wish to see in the world. I discovered that one of the biggest problems is that humans often don't know the consequences of their way of living on the animals, on the nature, and our fellow brothers and sisters. But I believe humans are not acting with bad intentions, and that everyone has a good heart. I discovered this when I stepped out of my comfort zone. It was in 2009, while I was studying here in the Netherlands, when I received two wedding invitations to Mexico. And even if I loved to fly, I knew that just a return ticket would cause twice as much carbon emissions as a human is to supposed to emit per year in order not to pass the 1.5 Celsius temperature increase. But for every problem, there's at least one solution. So together with my friends, Benjamin and Nicola, we were considering an alternative. In January 2010, we embarked on the biggest journey of our life. We wanted to hitchhike and boat hike without using money to Mexico. We wanted to break free of our conditioned mindset and discover the beauty of humanity. We wanted to show that everything is possible if you believe in it. So I left the Netherlands without keys, mobile phone or credit card, but with an open heart and the will to make it to Mexico. We managed to get quickly through Europe, and when we arrived in Africa, something special happened. It was our first night in Morocco, looking for a place to sleep, when we met Raphael. And Raphael helped us to find a place to sleep. And when we arrived in the room, it was 12 o'clock, midnight, the birthday of Nicola. And Raphael shared an inspiring story with us, which is as follows. A traveler comes into a village and asks two men, how are the people here in your village? And the wise man standing next to the well said, tell me how are the people in your village? And the traveler said, the people are ignorant, selfish, and close-minded. The traveler passes by, and another traveler comes ten minutes later. And the traveler asked again the same question to the wise man at the well. How are the people here in your village? Tell me how are the people where you come from. And the traveler said, in my village, the people are loving and caring and kind. And the old man said, in our village, you will also find loving, caring and kind people. So the, old, the traveler passes by, and the old man, witnessing the situation, asked the wise man, but how can you tell two different stories about our village? And the wise man said, I told both of them the truth, because they will find what they have inside of them. With this inspiring story, we continued our journey, and we made it onto the Canary Islands, where we have been stuck for three and a half weeks looking for a boat to cross the Atlantic Ocean. But one day, we found a backpack with two flags, one which was from Panama and another one which was from Mexico. It was like a sign for us. And the next day, we went more energetic and motivated than ever before to the harbor. And indeed, there was a new boat looking for crew. The problem was that the two Italian captains were looking for two women instead of three male hippies. But after talking to them, they decided they want to make our dream come true and take us to Brazil. 
So while crossing the Atlantic Ocean, we had time to reflect on all the beauty of mutual trust which we encountered wherever we came to, the beauty of hospitality which we never experienced before. But when we arrived in Brazil, we had to face the hardest time of our journey. Nicola left us and returned to Europe, and our energy was low and our mood was down. But we tried to hitchhike any way out of the city, but we were not successful. For three days, we have been waiting, and on the third morning, Benjamin woke up and all his belongings were stolen. We reached the lowest point of our journey. And after recovering, we tried again at another gas station. This time we waited for five days, unsuccessfully. We were completely exhausted and we almost lost faith. But then a wonderful human called Angel gave us the longest ride of our journey and took us 1,200 kilometers up north. It was in this moment where I realized that our thoughts are defining our reality much more than we often believe. And when my beautiful wife, Nieves, joined the journey, hitchhiking became even easier. And after 11 months, we made it to Mexico. Everything was perfect, despite we've been six months too late for the weddings. <laughs> <laughs> a month earlier, I took a step closer to my vision of treating others like I want to be treated. I adapted a vegan diet. I knew that today, the animal agriculture is the most destructive industry in the world, accounting for 51% of all greenhouse gas emissions combined caused by humans. That is more than the exhaust from all cars, ships, airplanes, and trains. I realized that the animal industry is today the leading cause for climate change, deforestation, water dead zones, and the largest species extinction in 65 million years. But besides environmental concerns and compassion with the animals, I knew that 800 million people are going to bed, starving, hungry every night, and at the same time reproduce so much food that we could feed twice as many people living on the planet today. But that most of this food is to feed the animals, the 60 billion animals which we kill every year. Even in the last 50 years, we humans have shifted the face of the earth more than all generations before us. I knew it's too late to wait for others, to wait for the politicians to fix the world, and that we have to stand up and be the change we want to see in the world. So after 15 months, 500 vehicles, thousands of people who helped us during the journey, and more than 24,000 kilometers on the road, we returned to Europe because we were expecting a baby, the biggest gift of life itself. The moneyless journey turned into a money strike, and I wanted to continue to dumpster dive to show the madness of our system, where it's allowed to throw all this food away, where it's forbidden to even take one banana out of the bin. I knew I had to do something to enable other people to save the resources which are there, to save the food which is throwing away every day. So I managed to convince a CEO of the biggest organic supermarket chain in Berlin, and he allowed us to save the food before the employees throw it in, into the bin, what they couldn't sell anymore. So the bread which was too old, the bananas which were too brown, or the product past the best before date. It was the beginning of the food-saving movement. And after, after that, I was busy 60, 70 hours per week, enabling more people to join the food-saving movement. And I felt I came to a limit, because I was organizing everything with Google Maps and Excel sheets. But since the money strike, I had the honor to give a lot of interviews, take part in TV shows, documentaries, and held lectures and keynotes. And one presentation was organized by Raphael Windrich, a brilliant mind who has the ability to write code which enables people to change. So at the same time, I was busy promoting food sharing, a platform where people can share 
the private surplus food with others. And two months later, Raphael and me, we were sitting on a table, and while I was writing my book, he was passionately developing the platform which gave wings to the food-sharing movement. I wanted to establish a flat and structure, a flat structure and non-bureaucratical way to enable others to save the food which supermarkets, bakeries, markets and other places throw away. So with Raphael, something else connected me from the beginning. We were dreaming of a world where everyone is sharing his or her skills unconditionally and acting as if money was no object. So today, thanks to more than 600,000 hours of voluntary contribution of people, the food savers, the 12,000 which we have gathered in Germany, Austria and Switzerland, we could save more than 3 million kilos of food from 2,300 stores which we are collaborating with. And while food sharing was flourishing, our second child was born. And it became more difficult for us as a family to find a stable and appropriate home. But thanks to my wonderful, beautiful, and inspiring, always supportive wife, I freed myself after five and a half years and I ended the money strike. Today, I'm here to tell you what I learned the most. I learned to be humble and to appreciate what we often take for granted, like the gift of life itself. Enough food to eat, a place to live, our family and friends, a peaceful environment, and the privilege to act as if money was no object and to do what I love to do. I wanted to continue to raise awareness and empower others to experience the beauty of unconditional giving and receiving. After years of dreaming, four months ago, together with an international team of highly motivated people from all over, all, all over the world, we started to create Unity, an open-source, ad-free, non-commercial, multi-sharing and saving platform which enables the people to embrace their vision for a better world. With Unity, we will not only provide the groundbreaking tools and knowledge to make the food sharing success story global, but to make everyone able to save resources which are about to th be thrown away or which are unused from companies, organizations and people. With Unity, we will unite sharing communities and ideas into one unique platform and, then, and let new communities emerge. With Unity, we want to enable the people to live their dreams and to connect with other people to make them reality. Therefore, we, we invented an innovative crowdsourcing feature which will connect people and projects with the ones who can help either with their skills, their items or rooms. Furthermore, everyone will be able to map and access public fruit trees, Wi-Fi spots, gift boxes, and to share skill and to share yoga classes, language classes, bike, garden, or couch sharing. To make Unity reality, we are still looking for more passionate developers and designers who want to contribute, as well as everybody else who want to contribute with their vocation. I believe every human has an inner light. And like when we share friendship, love, or happiness. We can share our light like a candle with thousands of other candles without shining less, but just creating more light around us. So listen to your heart. Live the dream you want to live and change the world how you would like to see this world. Thank you very much. <laughs>